There are 54 countries, around 3,000 tribes, and more than 2,000 different languages in the continent of Africa. Over the last 100 years, the Christian population in Africa grew rapidly from 9% to 63%. However, folk religious beliefs, prosperity gospel, and unhealthy mysticism entered the church and corrupted the gospel. The continent is also suffering from ongoing conflicts and the expansion of Islam. Praying about this, is if the church has failed completely. I wanted to give up ministry. Those are the kind of testimonies that we have. Many people think what Africa needs are materialistic aids, better strategies, and well-developed programs. They are helping Africa in the way they see fit. However, it's getting more difficult to find the true faith in the continent. What does Africa really need? In every place, there is somebody that is waiting. You get testimonies which are saying, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. There are some people that uh, that God has already caused their hunger in them. Somebody needs to take this as an answer to them, almost in every place. The only thing that can save Africa is the gospel of the Bible and the early church faith that Jesus is the Christ. I began to question everything, including the words of Jesus himself when he said it is finished. I began to question them. I said, what is finished? I was in trouble. What did you finish? Mm -hmm. When I, I got the revelation, I'd misplaced my faith, and therefore my life was wrong. But when I placed it right, my life has begun to be right. In actual fact, that is even an understatement. The statement is, I was dead, but now I live. We believe that Jesus is the Christ. And when we believe like that, there is something that he has added. Whoever believes like that will have life in his name. The ones who will die for the gospel, disciples. God used them to start the amazing work in Uganda. Pastor Ekopai received the gospel of the Bible two years ago. Although he was a bishop who led several churches and pastors, he wholeheartedly confessed, I need the gospel, not someone else. The gospel is life. Afterwards, he began to preach the gospel of the Bible in spite of many difficulties. Meanwhile, few Uganda disciples living in Korea also embraced the gospel of the Bible. They became a good team with Pastor Ekobai and challenged together to preach the gospel to all parts of Uganda. When I received the gospel, I noticed that this is what my life needs. The first time when I met the disciples in Korea, it really opened my eyes to what gospel is and the reason for even my ministry. It has been an amazing and an eye-opening experience for me to see that it is not just about me and the people that are close to me, it is something that must go all over the world. God prepared me for it before I met Pastor Cho because they found me praying and fasting, asking God what I'm going to do for Uganda. So from there, my life changed, I received peace, I saw answers to the prayers I've been praying. Then I started sharing the gospel with some of my friends here in Uganda online. So we started now focusing on how to save Uganda. I believe that God took me to Korea for this purpose. All my day I long to see Uganda safe. Regardless of trials and tribulations, they didn't give up and God opened the doors for them to influence the entire Uganda with the gospel. From the time we received the gospel, I shared it with some people who believed it and we formed the team. And then we got the conviction to go to share it in the regional cities. We decided that uh, let's do a pastor's conference as something that will push us to bigger things. Because we were already looking at the movement in front of us. But we said, how do we do it? How do we get there? So that's why a pastor's conference was caused in Bugade. In that conference, we had 168 pastors attending, almost 170. Uh, some people came from Eritrea, from Sudan, and from Kenya. So that was the, the beginning of trouble for Uganda. For instance, uh, Mbarara opened because of disciple that was there. He went to Mbarara directly after Bugari, 
and he started organizing for us to meet the pastors. So we immediately then organized what we called mini conferences in preparation for the evangelistic movement. Mm -hmm. So the purposes of the mini seminar to introduce the gospel to them in order to awaken in them a desire in which they want to hear more, they want to get into the depth. But it was exciting. Some people say, even committed themselves, this is the gospel that we desire for our region. So from Soroti, we went to Kasese, and then from to Hoima. Then from Hoima, when we went to Amorata, to Lira. Then from Lira, we went to Gulu. And from Gulu, we came back again to Soroti. Uh, when finally the disciples of Uganda that were found in Korea, when they came, in our planning meeting, we gave ourselves the regions. That was the final push. First, I traveled to Hoima to meet with uh, Pastor Kukiriza, who attended the mini conferences. And so he helped to call the pastors to mobilize them for the conference. So I went there to meet with him to make the final preparation, basically to check whether the pastors are ready to come, to check about the venue and the accommodation of the pastors, and to prepare for the meals. I also shared with them the passion and the reason why we are organizing for the conference because it was important for them to know why the conference was going to take place. Well, the success of the mobilization was because we were able to go for many seminars, small 20, 40 people meeting. Those were very, very important. For instance, people who attended the seminar in Soroti were mobilized by people who attended the mini seminar in Kumi. Mm and also in Soroti. The bishops who attended did some little work explaining what was happening, then they pushed people for the conference. Our travel was very, very rough. We arrived in Kasese just to go and sleep for a few hours, and then the next morning you are standing to speak. Again from Kasese, you are supposed to go to Hoima with, where there is no connection. There were those that said, no, this is heretical. Some of the bishops blocked their people from coming for the conference and some of the people just agreeing to the gospel and their perception of the gospel is like this is something just an additional to what we already know like amulata was asking give each pastor 10 10 books to go with then i realized that some of people didn't really come because they have received the message but they wanted additional material for their ministry uh, the pastor who was organizing the conference with me, expected a lot of money from us, but we did not have money, I did not give him any money. And also when the time came for the conference to happen, he did not pay much attention because he saw that there was not much money. But all God has been faithful that the worthy disciples are found. 20 disciples from 12 countries such as Liberia, Ghana, Guinea, Burundi, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Kenya, among others, came to help evangelize Uganda. They were scattered to eight regions of Uganda, enduring a long travel by public transportation. So we are looking for disciples who are able to save everyone. So in order to save Uganda, you need disciples who will save Uganda. And in order to save each region, you, you need disciples who will save each region. That is why we're looking for disciples. The reaction to the gospel was very overwhelming. Most of the people actually want say that we want to hear more. Actually, the translator for Kasese was so much moved by the gospel. So in his own testimony, he said whenever he listened, it would hit him first and then he would be able to translate. Uh, Gulu was amazing. Uh, we had <coughs> over 60 pastors attend. People say that this is what they have been waiting for. So many people testify that they have got answers to their questions in Gulu. Many big pastors received the gospel in the city. Even the overseer of Gulu Pastors Association, he said this is so powerful and is going to be like Priscilla and Aquila in Gulu, that whoever comes to Gulu and preaches the gospel for him is going to discern to see whether what they are preaching is really true. So Gulu was overwhelming. Amulata. Yeah, the reception in Mulata was very really amazing. The first day we had 54 pastors, and the next day we had 64, meaning that those that had attended the first day 
went and called their friends, come, 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 you're missing out on something. They were very deceptive, and what made it even much easier was that the person that was interpreting went deep in the gospel and made it very easy in their local language, making it even go deeper. Though some of them missed the point, but most of the people who testified were saying, this is it. We have got the thing that has been missing, the missing link, we found it now. Sorotu was moved. The gospel just moved, the work, the, the ministry that was done there moved Soroti to the extent that they decided to collect money to support the ministry in Korea. They the formed committee. up a committee mm -hmm. to continue this work. So that money was given to them that this is where you begin from. The coordinators that came with people from the, the regions region have decided to form themselves into a national committee because they want this gospel to go further. The, that committee is to mobilize the whole country. Now, it's not anymore their regions. They now want to reach out to the whole country. The team invited the disciples who embraced the gospel deeply in regional meetings to the intensive disciple seminar in order to help them to understand the gospel more and to take a real action to evangelize their nation. The seminar went on for three days as the team shared the contents of the gospel in depth and the hearts of participants were burning with them. After the message sessions, they gather in the evenings to discuss how to save Uganda and the neighboring countries with the gospel and plan for specific actions. All participants agreed to help each other's regions to spread the gospel. We were basically discussing the strategy on how can we be able to, to take this gospel to save the rest of the country. Most of them said the gospel has hit them and they have received the gospel, but also some of the people expressed the need to grow deeper. In every region, regional coordinator should be able to help organize for more uh, conferences within themselves so that they can deepen themselves with the gospel. And of course, they will be inviting people from other regions to be able to teach, to share with them the gospel. For example, Kasese promised to visit Hoima first in order to help the disciples in Hoima. They can mobilize the other disciples who were not able to come here for the national conference. We are now raising up the regional coordinators. In that retreat, the purpose is we want to bring them to the same understanding. I will take up each person on an individual basis. We have seen the five people that we particularly thought that their level was a little higher. They will assist the regional coordinators in the programs that will be determined. But before they do that, we are also having a meeting with them. And we shall meet in Kenya, not here. Because we are heading to Kenya with them, all of them. And there we are going to help Kenya. Uh, there will be a pastor's conference, 30 pastors have been organized. We are arriving one day before the conference. We shall be sharing together first before the conference itself. Sharing that we all have that one day, we shall see what level and try to balance off all of us so that when we come back from there, they will have grown up. They can be very useful for the you know, uh, coordinators. So I, I believe that way we shall find now disciples going down for the sub-regions, for the districts. Then from the districts we want to go down to the sub-counties. Then from the sub-counties we want to go down to the villages. Once we get people from every, in every village, in every sub-county, in every county, that's our target, to take Uganda for Christ. Yeah. Catch the youth at university, so that is another strategy that's going to be very powerful for Uganda. Our population has got very small population, and those are aged on top, but at the bottom here where it's only young people. So when we catch the youth, we're catching almost all the population of Uganda. For the youth, we have already set the committee, then we have regional coordinators. We want to have a small fellowship and not a denominational fellowship. We are going to have it in Kampala, Gulu, and have it in Soroti in Uganda. Every university has a Christian Union Fellowship. They go for missions 
Uh, every semester, students go for missions in different parts of Uganda. If this youth receive the gospel, that means as they go for evangelism, they will be sharing the gospel. And in a short period of time, I believe that Uganda will be saved. All the surrounding nations in East Africa, we have found a disciple. Like in Kenya, we have a disciple. In Burundi, like in Rwanda, we are going to offer ourselves to, to these countries, encourage them to borrow from us this model that we have used in Uganda. In the nations of Djibouti, Eritrea and uh, Somalia, where we have not yet found a disciple, I have already commissioned the disciple of Ethiopia to find the disciples in those areas. We are going to organize a seminar in the eastern region of Ethiopia. This will target uh, Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea and uh, some uh, the northern part of Ethiopia. I, I have discussed that we are going to not have a big meeting for a few pastors from each of those regions. And then we shall meet with them and definitely the Lord will lead us to what the disciples for that area. I've seen the faithfulness of God in Uganda. So if if God was able to move Uganda up this level, I see, based on the experience that we have had in Uganda, Africa too can be moved, because now we have disciples in almost every country. It needs only to share with them what we have gone through in Uganda, and the same can be repeated in every country. I believe that surely Africa will be saved. Some disciples can be sent to any other country, maybe in southern Sudan, send one person there to stay for one month. Let that person go help those people, raise one disciple, two disciples. So for us, we're just going to open up ourselves and be ready to pray with them, to stand with them and support them, to have God do the same thing that he has done in Uganda in all the various parts of Africa. Uganda, there's been a lot of mix of cultism, prosperity, miracles. That you find people running from one church to another, looking for solutions which they can only get in Jesus the Christ. But this message is going to all the four corners of Uganda to help people find their place back in God through the true gospel. I saw the need for the gospel. Everybody in Uganda needs it because there is nobody who has it. When we look, when I looked at this, the situation of the church, I surveyed in every place. This one is what Uganda needs. My passion right now is to see that the gospel reaches to every village in Uganda. That I believe it is possible because God has done it to this far. And I was also grateful to God for the teamwork both the local teamwork and also the international team that came around. Bishop Ekopai couldn't do it alone, but he needed the team to prepare and also even the team that came were very willing to work with him to reach Uganda in various corners. In every place there is somebody that is waiting. There are some people that, uh, that God has already caused their hunger in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody needs to take this as an answer to them. one thing which is very important to do is to pray hard to trust God for the ministry because that is one of the things that we did. To identify a disciple in every region not necessarily maybe a pastor, any person that you get because for us we were able to find, first we found young people but these young people were able to introduce us to their pastors. But first build a team because I had uh, people in Korea already and uh, though they were there in Korea we could meet online, online mm -hmm. eh? and then we would plan together. They were a great help and the, some of the places where I wanted to go I would say anybody in this place and they would say no there is this one get, get in contact with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody should even should avoid trying to use this gospel for building their denomination. Uh, people were wondering whether we had a church of our own or a ministry of our own. 
We never talked about it. We are not here because of my ministry. We are here because of world evangelism. Through this Uganda ministry, not only Uganda was greatly influenced by the gospel, but also other international disciples who came to help Uganda were encouraged and edified. Their spiritual eyes were more open and their hearts were burning even more with the desire of evangelize the whole Africa. The past two or three years that the gospel has reached, has come to Africa. Actually, we didn't have a clue or an idea of how the work of evangelization in our days in Africa should be done. And maybe one of the biggest mistakes we did, uh, Bishop Ogutai, was that we wanted to do the work of world evangelization our own way, the way we think. And that created a bigger hindrance for the bigger door to open for Africa. This is not the work of men. God himself came down to Africa through Uganda to come and build a railway line for us. This is the model that God has set for, for, for the whole of Africa. That it will be easy for us just to walk on this railway line than to try and build our own. For the past three years, we've been trying to build our own railway line. Uh, I'm like a baby because I, I learned many things. The way he was teaching is like the new revelation. When the gospel comes to you, it comes as, as a revelation. And that revelation has strengthened me. When I went back home, though, I lost my eight years old son. But with the gospel, the light of the gospel shining in me, I could not be silent but to continue sharing the gospel. And after this Ugandan mission, I'm going back to continue from where we started and to work together as a team to see how we can move through the length and breadth of Liberia, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and the entire West African region. This is like an eye-opener to me. It has opened up my spirit to go into the interland to see how we can help those who are there to understand the, this gospel of the Bible. Single. And also discover that we grow together in this sharing. God has people that are prepared all over the world in every country. We just have to find them. The pastor stood up in front of the congregation and he repented and he said that he'd been preaching a false gospel. And he said that he was no longer going to preach that false gospel. It, it's been less than a year since my wife and I first received the gospel. And it's taken a while for some depth of the gospel to come to us. And each time I get out, we've been to Cuba and in Mexico and, and now Uganda, there's a great depth that is coming. We have some plans, we have some doors that have opened uh, in the eastern side of Canada where we're going to be doing, uh, sharing the lectures with people and we're going to be knocking on church doors. We're going to be working hard because I see that that's what it takes. We have to work hard at this. This is the Uganda where we have a great opportunity to get this to I Africa shall be saved. Maranatha.